Hey guys, I'm back and I am wearing the same exact outfit as my previous video because I'm recording them right after each other because I decided I do like my sister's lighting better than my own so I'm gonna be filming it again before she comes back at 6 but yeah, hopefully by the time I post these videos I'll be back in Japan where she can't reach me with her wrath of evil just kidding, love you sis so the person who asked me this question was my host cousin from South Korea, so hi there, Ruhiyeon! But um, yeah, so he asked me what are the pros and cons of going to an international college. So I thought I'd answer that for him as well as clear up some things for other viewers. So let's go over this first. I don't know any first-hand information about going to American college because I went straight to Japan after graduation. So I cannot say from a first-hand experience, however, I have asked my friends and my sister about what going to an American college is like, and I have visited American colleges when I was searching for a college, so that's my experience with American colleges. If that's not enough for you, then I'm sorry. But yeah, I only know about American versus Japan, so that's mostly what this video is going to be about. So I've chosen five pros and cons about going to an international college in Japan versus going to, an inter to, to a college in so I've chosen five pros and cons about going to an international college in Japan versus going to a college in America. And first of all, I really want to clarify that my college is not what people would usually think of as an international college. It's not a school specifically for international people. It's not only in English. It is a real Japanese college and it just happens to have an English-based undergraduate program. So currently before in my first year of going to Japan, I was attending Tokyo International University. However, I'm currently in the process of, process of changing colleges, so we'll see how that goes. And by the time I'm back in Japan, hopefully I can do an update video about moving in Japan and all that good stuff. So first of all, I want to start off with the cons just because I like having all the good stuff at the end so it leaves the video off on a good note. So the first con that I really want to talk about and that you really have to consider before coming to a country such as Japan for college is the living expenses. First off, what I want to say is that Japanese college is a lot cheaper than American college on a general, like, average mean? On an average. <laughs> but yeah, so it's generally a lot cheaper. My college, my first year of college, was about $9,000 per semester and even cheaper because I had a half off scholarship and it's really easy to get a scholarship in Japan if you're an international student. However, American colleges can go anywhere from like cheaper than that to like $50,000 which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Like why do you have to pay so much for college when other countries get college free? That's a good thing about the living expenses, however on the downside of that I feel like they make it so much cheaper all is because the living expenses are so much more expensive in Japan. I would say in my beautiful average guesstimating world that it's about twice as much as in America. Food for example is ridiculously expensive, like a plate of pasta would be like 12 to 13 dollar equivalent, while in America it would probably be like eight dollars. That's not double. But yeah, you definitely have to be more on top of your money spending, especially if you're transferring money over from another country, for example US dollars to yen, or like Chinese yuan to yen, or I don't know, how do you say other countries? Korean yuan to yen, like you just have to be really aware of the conversion rates and like know how much you're spending. Another con of living in a foreign country for college is homesickness. and. If you watch my previous videos, you'll know that I really didn't go through this phase personally just because I knew I was coming home every break because if I didn't, my parents wouldn't pay for my tuition. <laughs> I just never really went through that homesick phase, but I do know a lot of people who did. Some people did debate going home and quitting the Japanese college. I'm not gonna mention any names, but I did have a friend who actually did apply for colleges back in America because she couldn't handle being away from America and like living in a different country with a different language and like the culture was just so different It was just really big culture shock and like the homesickness was too much She just couldn't handle it, but thankfully she decided to stay at our college in Japan So I can still see her whenever I go to college So I'm really happy that she decided to stay but it was a lot of stress on her while she was going through these thoughts so I just want people to know that 
you really need to get used to the fact that you're not going to be able to just rush and see like whoever you want to see. You're not going to have the same foods here. You're not going to have the same weather. You're not going to have the same like atmosphere that you're used to. And it's a really hard change to make when you're just coming out of high school. Just coming out of high school, you don't really know how to live on your own yet unless you had circumstances where you had to live on your own. I don't know your life. Coming right out of high school, you're already having to adjust to living alone. You're gonna have to do all your own chores if you didn't already. You have to learn how to manage your own money. You have to get a part-time job. You also have to learn how to do all your studies without your parents nagging you. You have to work, wake up early on your own if you didn't already do that yourself. But you really have to learn how to live by yourself. And added on top of that, you're in another country. You can't really call your parents every single time you need to ask a question because of international call fees, which are freakishly expensive. And I know there's a lot of stories about people who go to college in their own country and they become depressed because they can't handle living by themselves or they're just not fitting in well. That's gonna happen even more so if you go to an international college. Linked onto that is that you're not gonna have the support of your family or friends. So I mentioned this a bit before, but support from your parents is really important if you're gonna decide to go to an international college. I was really lucky personally because my parents are super supportive of, go of me going to an international college. It's just really hard to keep in touch with your friends and family and overall you're not going to have as much support as maybe if you're living in your own home country. I personally never had that problem but I know a lot of people do and they really need their parents for support in those times so you're not going to have that if you go to an international college. Of course you have the people around you who may become really good friends but you're not gonna have the same familial bond or like best friend people who you've grown up with to help you along in those kind of times and that can be really helpful so just know if you're gonna come to an international college you're not gonna have that same support that you would in your home country. Added on to that is that it's really hard to keep in touch with your friends and I know people already do become distanced from their high school friends or their middle school friends or your church friends or whatever like people already do get distance from those kind of friends once they hit college it's really hard to keep in touch it's gonna become even harder if you go to an international college I personally do not talk to anybody except my three best friends from high school and even then it's really hard because they're living their own lives you know and coming back from a foreign country you just learn to like different things. You learn to like different food. You learn to like different fashions, different music, different things. And it's not super like in your face like, oh my god, suddenly maybe I like real anime a lot or maybe I only like Asian styled clothing. No, it's not anything like that. It's just little minor things that maybe can start to distance you from your friends. That hasn't happened to me personally. I think maybe my friends secretly hate me now. I don't know. But yeah, that's something that can definitely happen to you and your friends, so just be careful about that. Make sure to keep in touch with your friends. I know I try to text my friends at least once every day, the ones that I'm really close to. And when I come back to America, I'm sure to hit up some people just to make sure that I keep in touch with everybody. But it's definitely a lot harder. You can't just ask somebody to go out and get milk tea with you because you're in a different country or like you're not gonna see your friends in college because nobody came with you to your college because you're in a different country. So yeah, it's definitely a lot harder to keep in touch with your high school friends, and yeah. And of course, the biggest con, which is all interconnected in this, is that life goes on without you. So while you're in Japan and having all these amazing experiences, and you're living the life that you wanted, if you do decide to go down that path, you have to know that life will go on without you back home. People will age, people will move on, people will make new friends, people will get boyfriends. When you get older, maybe people will start marrying. Things are going to change, people will change. And even though it may not feel like it, you may come home and you're like, wow, nothing has changed here. Everybody's exactly the same. I feel like I'm the only one who's changed. People change and people will move on and people will learn to like and love new different things. So you really just have to be prepared. Don't assume that everybody hasn't been living without you because they have. People are going to continue living their lives without you. So just keep that in mind. Don't assume that time has stopped even though it may feel like it because people are gonna move on with their lives and you just have to be prepared for that. It's not anything big, just be prepared.